Welcome back to the North Star Takes Podcast. I'm Bailey, he's Jacob, and we're a Minnesota sports podcast. If you're a Minnesota sports fan, please click the like button on this video and feel free to subscribe to our channel as well. And if you're a Vikings fan, smash that like button because somehow, some way, the Minnesota Vikings are 4-1 and one after five weeks, even though it, it seems realistic they could have lost all their games um, after week one. I mean, what do you make of this team, Liberta? They once again, you know, they get off to this hot start against the Bears. Probably the best offense has looked really all season. Get out to a 21-3 start. Um, then the offense goes absolutely silent in the second and third quarters. And the Bears come back, 19 unanswered points. They get up 22-21. to But then once again, when it matters, you get a great gate. Uh, great drive, excuse me, out of Kirk Cousins in the offense. The defense clutches up at the end with Cam Dancer ripping the ball out of old friend Amir Smith Marset's hands to seal the game. I mean, what do you think of this team? Just wildly inconsistent with all, you know, within a game, but at the same time, we're still finding ways to finish games and get those dubs. Yeah, it's wild. These last three weeks, I feel like I've just been the recurring theme of events, really. How, I mean, slightly different game scripts to get to where we end up like in the fourth quarter, but we always seem to find our way there, whether we're playing with big lead and then a team like the Bears gets gets back in it or the Saints too or the Lions. We come from behind and take the lead at the end. Like, boy, we get playing all these nail biters. And it's kind of kind of the same in some respects as last year. I felt like we did this last year a lot too. And yeah. now this year we're the difference is we're finding ways to win. And I, I think that's the biggest change here to really note i think that is very significant that we have an offense that really has done a good job this year going out there and scoring we absolutely have to have it like that last touchdown drive was just methodical going mm-hmm. i think seven minutes and going like how many plays was that probably like uh double digit plays yeah, for sure double, I mean, it was a wild. Plays. exactly yeah and i think that was our third touchdown drive of the day that, that was over double digit plays so mm-hmm. like it just it was just yeah, like I said, methodical. There's no better way to put it, really. So I'm very impressed with that. And again, like against the Saints, we had that big drive that set up the game winning Greg Chokes of field goal, you know, Kirk dropping that ball in a bucket to Jefferson. And then mm-hmm. obviously that big Osborne touchdown against Detroit. It's just like, yeah, it's a uh, it's a good trend to have. And I think that's, that's a real uh, testament to this team's ability to just stay in it and grind it out. That's just different than it's been in a while. So I'm pretty excited with where we're going still. Like you said, we're uneven. like to see a lot better, especially defensively. That really disappointed me because every defense that's played the Bears to this point has just had their way with them like they've done nothing. And then we kind of just gave them this day today where it was like they did a lot of things successfully and that that just grinded my gears, but I just got to be able to temper my expectations because I'm expecting the defense to be better, but I knew coming into the season, like it wasn't going to be great, but boy, it's just painful to watch every week. Like it's just never going to be visually pleasing. So all in all, we won and that's the end result. And that's what matters at the end of the day in this league, but still, yeah, it's tough room for improvement, but that's kind of what we've been saying the last three weeks. So as long as we keep winning games, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I'd say the most encouraging thing is we're still finding ways to win, even though, like you said, we haven't been playing our best by any means. Uh, You see the players talk about it after the game. You know, Harrison Smith's like, you know, we're learning while we're winning. And I think that's super important. And it is. I mean, that gives a team confidence because they know that they they know they can play even better. And they're still finding ways to win games. Granted, it has not been an extremely difficult schedule to this point. Uh, The Saints don't look that great. Um, Detroit just got shut out today by the Patriots. So, like, you know, and obviously the Bears aren't a great team by any means either. So it's like you beat the Packers, you got smoked by the Eagles, everyone else you've played has been kind of mid. So it's, you know, it's tough to get a real gauge on how legit this team is. But at the same time, like you said, it's the NFL. You'll take wins when you can get them. And, you know, you can't apologize for it either. Because at the end of the day, the goal of this team is to definitely, you know, win the division, make the playoffs, try to make some noise. Do we think this is a legit Super Bowl contender? I mean, probably not. But, I mean, you look around the rest of the NFC and – Sure, the NFC East is kind of popping up with some some better teams, like the Giants beat the Packers. They're four and one. Dallas Cowboys have a winning record with Cooper Rush at quarterback. Um, who else am I forgetting out there? Eagles. Eagles yeah. are undefeated. So, like, um, you know, and then obviously Washington's terrible. But then you know, you look across to the NFC West. Every team is just kind of sitting right around five hundred. Um, you know, Seattle's. Played some hard-fought games, but they're not a very good team. Arizona looks dysfunctional with Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury. Uh, so kind of an interesting, you know, and then obviously the South. You got Tampa Bay. They're the favorites for sure. Uh, they narrowly escaped the Atlanta Falcons, who were not a good football team. That was a bogus call that ended that game, mind you. Yeah, but. Horrible, horrible roughing the passer call on Tom Brady. 
Um, Saints aren't very good, obviously. They, you know, they got a bunch of injuries, and they just they're they just aren't that great with Jameis or Andy Dalton at quarterback. Um, Panthers are a complete disaster. So the NFC is kind of there for the taking. It's looking like the NFC East is kind of gonna. They might have a wild card team or two um, from that division. You got us and Green Bay, who are probably the playoff teams from our division. So in terms of at least a playoff spot, it's you know it's only week five. We're not halfway through the season yet, but things are starting to become a little more clear on who the actual good teams are and who the not so good teams are. So I know a lot can change between now and then, but we're already four and one. We're three and zero in the division. We get a Dolphins team next week that could be without Tua or Teddy Bridgewater. Um, they're both injured. Tyreek Hill left in a walking boot today. So all sorts of things are pointing, you know, the Vikings way for this Dolphins game, albeit it's a road game. They have a bye the following week. It's in Miami where it's hot usually. So, I mean, they're sitting in a good spot and it's there for the taking. If you can get to five and one for the, you know, by the bye week, it's going to be massive. So, um, yeah, just, just a, another crazy week for the Vikings, but you know, that's just kind of the way the NFL is. It's like we're always sitting there week after week and we're like, why can the Vikings just never win a game comfortably? Well, you look around the league and there's not many teams that do. I mean, the Bills will smoke somebody every once in a while. Or, oh, my gosh, they flattened the Steelers today. <laughs> they did. Or like the Ravens will show up and smoke somebody and it'll be no doubt. But, yep. I mean, even like you look at the Packers, granted they're not that great, but like every week they're in a close game. A grind. Yeah. Uh, last week they barely beat the Patriots. They really had to grind for that win. So it's like – you know, across the NFC, at least, there's a lot of teams playing close games. So, yeah, the Vikings aren't world beaters, and there's a handful of teams in the AFC that would probably smoke them if it got to that point in the Super Bowl. But um, I think we just need to enjoy it because the goal of this season was to win, and that's what they're doing right now. Yeah, as uh, Mike Tice used to say, enjoy the season. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to as much as I can. I know I can get carried away during, like, in the heat of the moment in the middle of these games. They're like, well, we're at the end of the day, I'm going to be happy because – when I look back on this, like I'm not going to be disappointed that we won a game by a touchdown against the Bears back in the beginning of October. Like that's not really going to bother me. It's what's, what matters again. It's end results. And mm-hmm. I kind of go into a different thing. I know you touched on this already about the standings, kind of looking around the NFC. What really piqued my eye today, really looking at it after we won this game and got the four and one, was seeing how many one loss teams are left in the NFC or really just the NFL in general. And you got the Eagles who are undefeated. It looks like they're well on their way as we're recording this to defeating the Cardinals to move to five and home. Okay. Yep. And then you got the Giants this morning who won that big game against the um, Packers in London to go to four and one. But then, and that, again, as we're recording this, if the Rams managed to defeat the Cowboys here, then the only one loss or zero loss teams left in the NFC are the Eagles, the Giants, and ourselves. So mm-hmm. I think that certainly says something. And even if you look across the AFC, after the Dolphins lost today, the only teams in the AFC who have one loss are the Chiefs and the Bills, who you kind of figure. So yeah. So there you are. Realistically, you're your top five team as far as record goes in the league. So like there, there's only one team with a better record than you. So i very impressed with where we're at, especially in a – First year with a new head coach, I, th- I think that says a lot that we're not putting ourselves in a hole like we've done the last couple of years. And like you said, kind of putting ourselves in a good position to uh, make a playoff push if we're so fortunate at the end. We just got to keep stacking these wins, especially against opponents that you should win against like we have these last three weeks. I know after that Philly loss, that's what we kind of felt like. These, like these mm-hmm. are a lot, a lot of winnable games coming up until that Miami game. Because obviously, after the first three weeks, Miami looked great as long as Tua and their guys are healthy, like they're a good team. But mm-hmm. right now, that's not the case. So it's a little bit different. But like we looked ahead at these three games, we're like, you realistically should win those three. Maybe drop one of them. Maybe, but like we took care of business, like we should. That's that's all I can really ask for. So looking forward to what's to come. I guess I I don't know how that I don't know how that Miami game is really gonna stack up right now at, at this point with all the uh, injury questions that they have there, but. I guess uh, we'll know soon enough later in the week, but pretty, pretty excited where we're at. Four and one, can't complain. So I'd say like the most encouraging thing to me is the offense is looking to, like it's getting better week after week. You, you're sure. kind of seeing more success of, of getting Justin Jefferson the football. Um, Dalvin Cook's starting to look a little better in terms of finding some running lanes. You know, the offensive line, I think today they finally had their first holding penalty all season. I, so, I don't really think it was them. I think it was Irv. Oh, was it Irv? So maybe, yeah. yeah, it wasn't even the offensive line. So like, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, there's the offensive lines playing well. I know, you know, Ed Ingram str- struggled on a couple plays, but he's a rookie. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's encouraging. And I kind of want to turn this over to a Kirk Cousins discussion before we close Ooh, it out here, just because you and I have both been, you know, strong 
you know, against Kirk Cousins. We just we don't think he's the guy. We don't think he can get it done. Mm -hmm. Um, What I will say is there's been moments this year he's looked absolutely phenomenal. For instance, the first quarter of today's game, I think he went, what, 17? 17 17. Yeah, first 17 passes were completions. Um, But then he just – he hits these lulls again where it's like, I don't know if it's necessarily his fault. Maybe the play calling isn't so great. You know, it's hard to know exactly what's going on. But it's the inconsistencies within a game that just kind of drive me crazy because it's like he never just comes out and dominates from start to finish in a game. Like today, Josh Allen had like 300 some yards and five touchdowns. And there was just no doubt the entire game. He was just destroying the Steelers. Yep. He's going to step on their throat the whole time. (laughs) And I'm not asking Kirk Cousins to do that on a week by week basis, but like, you know, every once in a while, just come out and just own the game and leave no doubt. Especially Um, it's a bad team like Chicago coming in here. They were terrible. And then you're up 21 to three at home. But where I will give him credit is he once again continues. I think it's what three weeks in a row now. He's led a game winning drive. That's true. Um, albeit That's against true. not so very good teams, but he's done it and he hadn't been doing it for the longest time here. It's like it didn't matter who we were down against. He was not going to lead that comeback drive. And the offense was a disaster. They couldn't get plays called. They couldn't get people lined up. And you're just not seeing that now. It's like today they had a nice, what, like seven minute drive. I think from nine minutes left in the fourth quarter to about two minutes left. And they just drove down the entire field, you know chunk by chunk by chunk, ran a bunch of clocks, scored a touchdown, get a two-point conversion, and it all just looked very clean, organized, great teams do. and not chaotic. Exactly. So I got to give Kirk credit there because even if the offense is still a work in progress, um, even if you know things aren't necessarily going well throughout portions of the game, when it's really starting to matter, you know, they're really they're really coming through, both him and Kevin O'Connell, in terms of the play calling, the execution. Um and the playmakers involved as well. Irv Smith had a couple nice catches on that final drive. I think he found KJ Osborne once or twice. Obviously, Jefferson's involved. They're running backs. So it's like, you know, Thielen didn't have a big game today, but obviously he's still a big part of the picture. So um, like we've talked about time and time again, with all the weapons we have, I mean, it just it makes sense for this team to have a, su- a successful offense with a coach that kind of knows what he's doing. And through five games, I really do think O'Connell offensively knows what he's doing. The defense, I'm still very skeptical about. It's an aging defense, and they have to play a lot of shell coverage, a lot of zone. So if you don't get a good pass rush, which we really haven't been, um, teams will pick that apart. But offensively, I'd say I'm getting more and more encouraged rather than discouraged. Yeah, totally. I, I agree 100%. I think every week you've seen a little bit of progress, a little bit better looking product as far as the offense goes and that's what you want to see and I think we're going to hit a point where I think this offense should recognize its full potential later in the year and that's really exciting because the thought all of us have around that is that it's like a top five unit and like that's mm-hmm. that's super explosive can win you a lot of games so like the sooner we can get to that the better and obviously you're not going to get there overnight so it's good that we're taking steps there just progressively like we are and still winning along the way I think it's the most important thing like you mentioned with the Harrison Smith quote after the game being like yeah we're we're learning while still winning so mm-hmm. I think that I think that's huge and I think again goes back to not put yourself in a hole and especially when you play or you play in the same division as a team like Green Bay who's gonna win a lot of games I, yeah. I get they lost to the Giants today and they're not three and two but still it's like they they've won 13 games every year they've had before so it's like I until I see different like i'm just gonna assume that's probably about how many games they win maybe at 11 or 12 but still mm-hmm. like that that's a lot of, that's a lot of games so like you can't afford to misstep especially in these really critical division games against a team like the bears who are bad this year at home playing especially for nothing. yeah at home they're playing for nothing like they're not making mm-hmm. playoffs don't have any visions of that so right. really you can't drop those games because division record after head to head like if you come down to it with the packers at the end you lose that game in Lambeau, and it's going to your division record and then you would have dropped that game at home against the bears that the packers didn't back in week two so it's right. like hey kind of got to think about that too these division games are actually important so it's good you took care of business today especially but i again kind of reeling back into the whole uh kirk discussion though yeah i got i got to credit him i'm i'm <laughs> I'm like one of the many out there that are uh, haters of his as far as in this fan base goes, because I just don't, I don't see, I don't see him wanting us the whole thing, wanting us a Super Bowl. So I, that's, that's my, that's my goal here. That's what everybody's mm-hmm. goal should be is to win a championship. But I think everybody else has maybe different expectations, but that's what I like to set the bar. And I just don't see him doing that, but that's kind of a different discussion, but I, for now, he's finding ways to get us points, and we absolutely have to have it. So, got to credit him for that. Absolutely. Uh, any other final thoughts from you, just on today's game, or where we're, where we're sitting in general uh, before we take off here? Yeah, you know, I was kind of chalking up that game next week as a little teaser uh, for Miami. I think 
they I was thinking that was gonna be a loss the whole time. And now if we're <laughs> they if they're digging deep in the bag for a third string quarterback there to roll out there and start and play 60 minutes against us, I think we gotta win that game, especially if Tyreek Kill is out and has its foot mm-hmm. injury. Like I don't think we can drop that one anymore. That feels like a very wonderful game. And that would be uh really a big one to pick up on the road. Like that would be our first true road win. I know one that won against the Saints, that was more of a neutral site thing. So, like, to pick up one, especially against a team who I believe, as long as two was and out too long, it's, it's probably a playoff team. So, right. that would be a really big one to pick up. And you go 5-1 and one into the bye week, and that would be a huge momentum. And I think you'd really assert yourself in the center seed. Like you said, that doesn't have a lot of dominant powers. So, I think I'll leave it at that, though, that next next week feels very winnable. And I hope that we do if they're starting a third-string quarterback. Yeah, that's a good point too. I, I haven't looked ahead to see like when the Packers play the Dolphins, but mm-hmm. if the Dolphins are healthy at that time, that could be a you know a huge swing between when we play them and when they play the Packers. True, true. So that could be an advantage for us. I guess my final thought before we take off here is uh, excellent play by Cameron Cameron Dancer at the end of the game to strip yes, that ball. Um, he's been playing pretty well this season overall. He's had a couple rough moments, you know, pass coverage wise, but overall, like tackling especially, um, he's been a very good player and probably our best secondary player honestly Mm -hmm. um so that's been encouraging and i thought irv smith played a pretty good game today he didn't do a ton but he made some nice catches when we needed him to he moved the chains um just super i'm just not really impressed with johnny munch so i think all that hype of him being tight end one can die down because that's just not a thing so um irv smith isn't amazing he's he's not deserving of some huge you know massive contract extension but i think it'd, it'd be nice to have him around healthy for a few years yet just to He's got some athletic potential. Just get him the ball, and he can. He's got some speed for a tight end. So, exactly. um, I was encouraged by his play today as well. So it's nice to see some of these young guys step up. I think I saw Asamoah had a couple snaps on defense as well. So that's something to keep an eye on. Um, yeah, just super exciting stuff. Hopefully, we can get some more of these young guys involved. I think Andrew Booth basically said he's going to play next week. Um, I know he's been questionable like the last several weeks now, but yep. um, so it sounds like he thinks he's going to play next week but it'd be nice to get him on the field as well. So um, just get these young guys more involved and keep winning football games and can't really ask for much more than that. So exactly. that will do it for this edition of the North Star Takes podcast. Like I mentioned earlier, please click the like button on this video and feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, give us a follow on both Twitter and Instagram. And let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. What'd you think of this Bears game? Uh, what do you think of the Vikings, you know, c- continuing to find ways to be clutch and, uh, execute on these late game winning drives and just where we're sitting in general in the NFC and with the playoff picture five weeks into the season. So until next time, thanks for watching.